right? What is this thing called? What is this thing called? This kind of display? This is called a heat map. Somebody said it, but uh, uh, not loudly enough. Okay, so you can see it's a sea of green. This is partly because of all kinds of optimism, because the economy generally is quite strong. Last month's jobs report was very strong. And then, of course, the main driver now is uh, the two trade deals, and especially the phase one of the China trade deal. So, uh, so all this news is coming. So this is what I've told you guys to do. Continuously monitor markets and also monitor the news flow and try to relate the market movement to the news flow and see to what extent it makes sense. Because this may also affect your decision to become a, a technical trader or a fundamental trader. If you come to the conclusion that the market moves are not, uh, you know, it's not possible to explain the market moves based on uh, fundamental analysis. So this is the fundamental reasoning that will always be given by the market. But if you look closely, you'll find that sometimes it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like companies announce earnings, then very good earnings, but the guidance is poor, so the market drops. And the next quarter, the same thing doesn't happen. So it's kind of difficult to figure out what the market wants to focus on. Okay, so anyway, you can see here how this uh, uh, sea of green and the way the heat map works is. So the stuff which is up more will have a you know a bigger uh, uh, you know deeper green and all that. I think the lighter green because Facebook is up 196. It's lighter than Amazon. So this is how it is, and you can always, as you can see, you can change the performance and check it. So you can do this for any market. This is right now for U.S. markets, but the concept is what is important okay all right so let's get back to our discussion we were discussing so what have we discussed with respect to our uh, balance sheet with respect to our balance sheet and this particular case what we have discussed is so this balance sheet that we have okay what we have discussed so far is we have discussed risk books two types of risk books let's just look at the oil chart oil prices are moving up you would have noticed okay so uh, we have discussed risk books two types of risk books then we have discussed the uh, concept of krfs okay the uh, every krf is a price in a krf market and then you have the concept of the underlying position which is also related to a krf market for each krf market you have some underlying position or the other long or short then we have discussed um, hedge positions we have discussed the logic of hedge positions how it's what is the objective of the hedge position is to offset the underlying position and that you put on yes why are people looking blank are you following Ritesh? you following okay so uh, the objective of the hedge position is to offset the underlying position okay and so this we you put on the hedge position only when you because you're constantly monitoring the KRF markets like one of your KRF markets is crude oil and your underlying position here is long and you're constantly monitoring it so if you have if you monitor this and if you have a bullish view right now let's say in that case you would not your decision is not to hedge you don't buy we'll come to that golden rule of hedging but we have already discussed this point remember that that this is what makes it different when you are running where this is what this is one of the differences between a running a, a, a hedge portfolio versus running a, a speculative book remember in a speculative book if you were trading uh, if you what you did in your first two projects in the NSE project and the option pro trading project if you were bullish you would buy if you were bearish you would sell right in this case it's not so simple because you have to be conscious you already have a position you already have an underlying position so your hedge position has to take account of that so you have to monitor the krf market in which you have an underlying position so if you come to a conclusion after monitoring uh, if you if anyone doesn't understand what i'm saying at any step please stop me okay i'm going quickly because these things have already been covered yes. all right so if you don't understand any comma full stop uh, what i'm saying please make sure you stop me so because you already have the reason it's not so simple not as simple as running a speculative book is uh, you can't just go long when you're bullish and short when you're bearish mm -hmm. Because you have to be mindful of your already uh, your pre-existing underlying position, which is why it's called a passive risk book. Because of the nature of the business, you already have some positions. All right. So you're monitoring that. You know that in this KRF market, your underlying position is long. So in this case, if your view is bullish, all this stuff is already there in your notes. Okay, in all your project briefs. So there's really no need to write anything. Just make sure you understand it. Uh, and you can always ask me later if there's anything which is not clarified. So if you have a bullish view here, what will you do? <laughs> uh, buy. You just said buy. What is your underlying position in, in this KRF market? Long. So if you have a bullish view here, what will you do? 
if your assessment becomes remember this is a key to all decision making which is why you're made to do all these projects the key to all decision making and finance roles at the heart of it lies taking a view on the market whether you're raising capital issuing a, uh, putting through a debt issue or an equity issue everything centers around taking a view on the market okay so you have to take a view on the market when hedging as well so if you have a view on this and your underlying position in this KRF market is long okay what will you do yes Kanika what does your whatsapp say what will you do you're not paying attention don't look at your whatsapp put your whatsapp on the on the table maybe at least as a first step instead of giving it to yeah put it there and don't look at it now any any idea what is Aurora going to tell us if my KRF, uh, if uh, my underlying position in this KRF market is already long, you know that we have seen this. When you go to the balance sheet, you see that the inventory is one of those items is oil. You've got 25,000 barrels of oil in inventory, so your underlying position is long. Yes, you agree with that? You helped with us, uh, helped us with a question on that point earlier. Now, so now if you have a bullish view, when you look at this, you have to analyze the KRF markets. You have to constantly monitor each of the markets. So if you have a bullish view on this, you will buy. So you're joining everybody here. Yes, who else? SG1, what is the, uh, is my question clear? Yes. So what will you do? If you, if, you, if you analyze the market and you come out with a conclusion that your underlying position is long, uh, sorry, if the market view is bullish, the market is gonna be, uh, is gonna be going higher, what will be your action? You'll go long. Okay, anybody else? We're not doing yes so tarun is right you will not do anything because you already have a position so you have to when you when you are looking at what kind of decision you are going to take you have to think about what will there are two possibilities okay either you buy or sell a uh, three possibilities either you buy sell or do nothing all right so the point is that what you have to think about in terms of your logic for uh, hedging okay this is where hedging differs from speculating uh, from from running a spec book that you have to see if your view is correct so, and everything is based all your actions are based and this is true in all finance roles okay all your actions are based on the assumption that your view is correct okay so you have to assume that your view is correct and then you take the action of course and it, it, it may turn out that your view was wrong but that's what you have to live with right so uh, if you already have an underlying if your view is bullish okay if the market moves up then what will happen the underlying position will it be showing losses if the market price has already moved up from that price we had put in earlier it's over 60 dollars now when the market price moves is your underlying position showing losses or profits profits, profits okay so the rule of hedging is that if you if you expect your underlying position to move into profit then you don't hedge okay we'll come to that because we'll come to the golden rule of hedging but let me just quickly keep up the wrap it up here and tell you this so this is what makes uh, then we'll get into it systematically so the point is here because you have to be mindful of your underlying position you already have an underlying position so in this case if your uh, underlying position is long and if the view is bullish that means the market is likely to move up in that case your underlying position is likely to show profits okay so in this case you don't hedge you do nothing so out of the three actions buy sell or do nothing you do nothing why are you doing nothing because based on your view you expect the you expect the underlying position to show a profit okay or to uh, the valuations to improve on the underlying position yes is everyone clear so that's what drives your actions you don't do anything but if your view is bearish if you feel that this is pretty much the top the market is now likely to drop to 50 to 50 very sharply now what will happen now go back to think about the logic if the market drops from sixty dollars to fifty two fifty what will happen to the dollar value of your inventories they will rise or fall yes Ganotra? if the market drops if the crude oil price drops we're just focusing on the crude oil inventories but the logic is the same for everything if the market drops if the crude oil price drops what will happen to the dollar value of your uh, let's say it drops from 58 to 52 what will happen to the dollar value of your crude oil inventories will they rise will it rise or will it fall 
it will fall right so the dollar value of your crude oil inventories will fall and then what will be the impact and you have to carry it through to the impact on the net worth what will happen to your net worth decrease right because if the dollar value here reduces there's no residual quantity on this side on the asset side so the anytime there's a change on the asset side the balance sheet size is affected you follow that you have to lodge you you need to be following these logical steps because on the asset side there is no uh, stabilizer like the net worth figure there's no uh, kind of a residual figure no no residual quantity so if the asset side anything changes it changes the balance sheet size up or down so if it changes the balance sheet size then then the balance sheet size is basically either total assets or total liabilities that's what we call the balance sheet size so if that changes then the liabilities will also change and then the outside liabilities will not change in value because lenders will not accept a cut in their loan all this low logic is explained in your notes okay in your project brief so but you need to be clear about this instead of mugging up you need to think through it on in your uh, you know in your head and and be clear about it yourself because i can see that many of the things which have been discussed people are not clear about okay because people are busy looking at their whatsapp when the class is being conducted okay so please make sure you're clear about all these concepts everything that is being taught uh, like most of the courses they're all conceptual you have to be clear about your concept once you understand the concept you'll never forget it in your life because it's logical so you'll actually gain some value from the course all right so this will reduce in value this will affect the balance sheet size it will go down and then because the liabilities will also go down because the outside liabilities will not change in value and therefore the, to uh, to accommodate the drop in the total balance sheet a uh, total liabilities figure because outside liabilities will not go down so net worth has to go down this is clear yes okay so this is the logic that you have to give all right so this is what is going to happen so therefore that's what drives your hedging decisions not just the the fact that uh, which is also true that the underlying position will start showing losses right but the total impact of that you have to carry it through to the net worth everything goes down to net worth if your net worth is likely to increase then you don't do anything but if your net worth is likely to decrease then you act is this clear and based on the strength of your view you may hedge the entire 25k or you may hedge 15k or 20k or 5k or whatever it is that's a decision that you can make okay you have the flexibility that's where the hedging team has flexibility and that's why the performance of uh, every team will differ that's one of the reasons because even your decision to buy or to uh, decision to hedge or not to hedge that will also affect your total profits okay so we'll see how this is going to work so everyone should have been clear about all this by now okay so if you you take a view on this and so we've covered all this hedge position what else have we covered we have covered we of course covered the idea of please make sure you remember that the because the euro dollar futures are not part of your uh, trading project the dollar libor risk on the balance sheet we are not going to include it as part of our trading project we don't have enough capital in the account so we have discussed it separately as a theoretical discussion how you use euro dollar futures to hedge interest rate risk remember we discussed about taking views and all those uh, cases are all all those scenarios are in your spreadsheet so what have we discussed here okay we have discussed um, yeah interest rate risk with euro dollar futures then we have discussed why dynamic hedging uh, hedging programs are more risky we have discussed that as well so we've discussed the difference between the static uh, so uh, we after underlying position we discuss the hedge position and we discuss the logic of the hedge position which we have now just now gone through again right that if you think that there is going to be um, if you think based on your market view that the underlying position is like you lose value which will eventually filter through to a drop in net worth okay on the asset side of this the underlying position and then accordingly based on that logic you will decide to hedge when you feel that your net worth is likely to go down if your net worth is likely to go up okay then you don't hedge that's the basic framework of the hedge position the logic of the hedge position and that the hedge position is an offset and then we also discuss static versus dynamic hedging programs remember that yes okay so uh, static versus dynamic hedging program any static programs are where you can once you put on the hedge you're not allowed to lift that anymore you're not allowed to unhedge anymore okay so first you have the underlying position 
if you take a hedge position that's basically called you hedge if you lift that hedge position once again that's unhedging okay so hedging and unhedging this is only allowed in a dynamic re, uh, risk management program which is more risky because you open up the underlying position once again you are increasing your risk which is against the philosophy of hedging right and then you also uh, are uh, crystallizing losses you could end up crystallizing losses so you need to have risk capital for that so we've discussed that point as well now we go on to the next point okay let's go on to uh, this is 1712 okay so we, we are going to discuss now see yeah. I've actually put this in your spreadsheet as well so that you have a uh, in what are the topics we have discussed in the case <laughs> So what are the topics we have discussed in the case as far as the case is concerned okay this we have okay now what is the scheme of the project let's understand the scheme of the project and what your goal is all right notice that there are two there's a third uh, yeah in this case you don't have that so you notice this is a starting this says this sheet says starting balance sheet now we're going to explain to you how the whole scheme of the project works which is how any uh, risk management program uh, for us for a hedger for a passive risk book is going to work okay any risk management program for any book actually even for an active risk book when you're doing hedging uh, there is um, it's going to work in the exact same way so you have a set of underlying position that, which is shown on the starting balance sheet okay so the way things are going to work is that at the start of the project i will uh, whatever that date is i think that's uh, what whatever it is okay so the state of the date of the starting project uh, starting date of the project will be over here and i will enter the value so starting date is a monday so i will take the friday closing previous friday closings in new york okay and i will uh, enter those values over here these are the prices okay i'll enter those prices over here that will give you a set of starting values yes everyone's following okay so that will give you a start set of starting values i will also enter the market prices for these on friday friday new york closings okay for all these variables okay we will take a note of LIBOR as well, but it's not part of the project, but logically you should do that. And then we'll put in the Aussie and the dollar yen values as well. So now what will happen is that that combination of prices is going to create a net worth figure. This will lead to a different net worth figure because the prices would have changed by uh, next to next Friday, right? The Friday after next. This is going to happen the Friday after next. New York closing. After the New York closing, I'll take in the prices. So prices would have changed. So the net worth is likely to have changed. So whatever that starting net worth is that is just going to go over here okay the same figure this is just the same as that row is this clear you have the starting net worth okay now what's going to happen at the end of the balance sheet at the end of the project i will do the same exercise i've not changed the figures here and the dates i'll change the dates but this is now the sheet balance sheet end so this is going to be the same exercise now what will happen these prices i will put in after the project ends okay so whatever that date is when january 15th or whatever it is so after the project ends which will again end on a friday the project will end on a friday so we are talking about there's going to be a gap of four weeks between this set of prices here okay which is going to be at the start of the project and then there's going to be a gap of four weeks and then there'll be a different set of prices here is everyone following yes are you following so i'll put in the friday closing prices for the end date of the project so that will lead to a different net worth figure right we can see that there's going to be a different net worth figure and then we can actually uh, we can do that let's say these prices become let's say 1350 this becomes 2.2 this becomes 55 i'm just putting in some arbitrary prices this becomes 109 um, this becomes 65 all right so you can see that net worth has gone down so let's assume that these are actually the starting prices to save ourselves the labor let's assume that you started with a net worth of 2.2 yeah you started with 2.2 net worth over here but at the end we when we put in the prices you will find that your net worth has gone to 1.5 all right so here it shows your usd pnl should be showing here why is it not um c13 by this anyway i will i will uh, no where is c13 
yeah so this has to be just formula needs to be changed this cannot be the the closing reference i have not entered this closing um, yeah this this thing should be actually coming from here this should be actually taken as i'll change the formula but you get the idea this is actually the this is not the closing reference this is actually the uh, opening reference i don't know why i've written this as closing reference but um, is equal to g13 where is g13 okay no this should not be there let's change this okay let's change this to i need to make this a space special all right now you see this okay so uh, this is not the closing reference but anyway this formula is not correct so i need to change the i must have had a different formula scheme but basically what's going to happen is this the uh, let me write this as let me write this as the, like this okay that is the right way to write it Now one minute. H two minus G thirteen. This should show a loss actually. H two minus G thirteen. I don't know why it's not showing a loss. Oh yeah yeah yeah. See right correct correct very good. So this actually if you remember your formula, uh, your formula when we were doing defining the trade risk calculations. Right, when we're doing the trade risk calculations, you have to write it as exit price minus entry price. So the closing is actually the very good. So this is actually uh, trade uh, this minus this. Now it shows. Now it shows this loss. Okay, is this clear? Now, if you see here, is is everyone clear about what we have done so far? Okay, you start with the ending. Uh, we start with the starting prices. Okay, and this is exactly how a hedging program would work. All right. So you start with the, uh, the the initial prices, and then towards at the end of the hedging period, you again compute the uh, total value of all the underlying positions and the closing net worth, right? And then you take now the closing net worth minus uh, starting net worth. That was basically going to give you your PNL. Yes, in this case, you see that the underlying position has lost value because the net worth has gone down. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, in this case, what we'll do? So this is clear. This is nothing. This is something you can't do anything about, right? Because as we said, the underlying positions they change as a function of what the business is doing, right? What the business is doing in its day-to-day -day work, right? Garvit, don't look at your WhatsApp. Put your phone on the table. Put it on the table so that another also Garantra also put your phone on the table. Don't keep looking down. Put your phone on the table. Yeah. Okay. So is everyone following so far? as the underlying positions on their own they have they don't change you can't do anything about it as a hedging team uh, uh, you you have to uh, because those positions change only as the business uh, goes through its operations okay so when you do a tr when you do a sale when the sales team uh, negotiates a sale then the positions go down okay then the underlying position they don't longer show it as unhedged inventory so if they sell say 10000 barrels if they sell to uh, if they uh, if they are able to sell 10000 barrels to japan okay then uh, the underlying positions in crude oil will go down from 25k to 15k because they have already locked in the sale once they conclude the sale contract they will move it off the underlying they will move it off the inventory the inventory may show for accounting purposes okay but the price risk for uh, purposes of hedging you will prepare a separate balance sheet which is unhedged inventory this inventory is basically going to show the unhedged inventory is everyone following if you have inventories of crude oil and you have got 25k of inventory this is unhedged inventory the moment you sell 15k barrels to japan the price risk on that contract the market price risk has been locked in so unless japan defaults there is no problem you will get that price realization on that 15k barrels are you following that so therefore your unhedged inventory will go down from uh, 25k to 10k yes so this is only but this is happening as part of the normal operation of the business so this is not something that can be changed by the hedging team they can't tell the sales team okay, please quickly do your sales they have to do the sales based on how the business operates the normal cycle of the business depending on how customers decide and all that right so you can't affect all that the idea of hedging is that you should not disturb the underlying operation of the business is this clear okay so what you can do is if you now what will happen is now let's go back to the scheme right let's say with your judicious uh, let's say that your uh, your view on this market was bearish 
okay and therefore you 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 were able to see that the prices would quickly drop to fifty dollars now at this point therefore you would have sold 25 contracts and hedged the entire position because if the price was going to drop quickly from sixty dollars to fifty dollars there would be a huge loss on the underlying position and that would reduce the size of the balance sheet that would reduce total liabilities because outside liabilities can't change so net worth would have reduced so based on all this logic based on this fear you would have hedged the entire uh, uh unhedged inventory of 25k barrels yes with 25 contracts so you have sold 25 contracts you have gone to this and you will go here and you will sell 25 contracts by hitting this bid okay so if you do that and then you'll show this profit what will happen essentially is we have already gone through i think we've gone through this in a post class discussion but which is nevertheless part of the videos uh, which we, we had with tarun that uh, this when it drops from here to here what will happen is if you are smart enough to see this drop and you're able to hedge the entire 25k at 60 20 effectively the net result is that you have realized the 60 20 price for your full 25k inventory and you have locked it in the net realization is locked in that's what happens essentially the price at which you hedge whatever amount you hedge you have locked in especially if you're taking the we, we are going to have the discussions uh, with respect to a simple static hedging program because it's easier to understand the concepts but even if you do a dynamic hedging program they will obviously you will open up the thing we can do come to that discussion later but understand it with respect to a simple static hedging program where once you hedge you forget about it you don't unhedge anymore right so in this case if you have hedged at 60 20 if you hedge your entire 25k now what happens next day the price drops to 50 dollars so your underlying position shows a loss of 25k barrels times 50 minus 20 60 20 yes everyone is clear the underlying position shows that loss right but the hedge position what will happen to the hedge position because the hedge position is short the hedge position is short 25 contracts over here at 60 20 <coughs> yes so the hedge position what will happen will it show a profit or loss short position yes what will happen we have what will happen to the hedge position if the price drops from 60 20 after you sold 25k contracts at 50, uh, 25 contracts at 60 20 and then the next day the price drops to 50 dollars so what is the uh, pnl of the hedge position is it a profit or a loss <coughs> one minute let her answer Yes, Garvit, put your phone over here. Hey, give me the phone. You can, what are you looking at then? Okay, yes. One minute. So, no, nobody else should talk. One sec. What did I say? We took a view on the crude oil price. We are conscious of the fact that our underlying position is long, right? So, therefore, we. Uh, went short because the underlying position is long our view on the crude oil market is bearish okay underlying position in this krf market is long our view on the market is very bearish so what is likely to happen to the underlying position if i don't do anything it will lose money because the prices will drop eventually they'll lead to a drop in net worth so therefore i must protect against that the objective of the hedge position is to protect against losses in the underlying positions okay or reduction in net worth reduction in net worth from uh, you know uh, adverse uh, price movement with respect to the underlying positions okay so in that case i went short i hedged the entire unhedged inventory of 25k barrels i sold 25 contracts at 60 20. next day the price drops to 50. so my question now is which my hedge position my hedge position only no forget about the underlying position is my hedge position showing a profit or loss If I went short 25k contracts on my hedge portfolio, I went short 25 contracts or not 25k but 25 contracts. If I went short at 60, 20 and the next the price the next day the price drops to 50. So is my hedge position showing a profit or a loss? Profit, right? And what is the amount of the profit? <coughs> Multiply with 50. <laughs> Profit will be calculated the same way, remember, just as uh, one minute. Yeah, around $10 into how much? 25? 
not 25 but 25000 because the price is per barrel these prices crude oil are quoted as price per barrel if you have any doubt you can go to the website cme website look at the contract specs and see that the price is quoted per per, per barrel okay it's not per 10000 per not per 1000 barrels so there's a difference between the un, the price quotation system and the unit of the 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 contract size okay the contract size is 1000 barrels but the price is quoted as per barrels so you have to calculate your pnl you have to use the same formula which is already there on your sheet on your um, on your uh, let's do let's do the calculation once again just so that everybody is clear your loss is calculated you have to set up all these losses okay so your what is your position minus 25 okay yes because your hedge position is short so your hedge position is 25,000 because each contract is thousand barrels so your minus 25 so this is your position okay exit price is $50 entry price is 60.2 all right so the way you write the formula is same formula so we have to make sure that the formula is the same the general formula so it's easier to remember okay the principle is easier to remember and we write the negative we write the negative this is all in your notes from previous uh, sessions okay from previous courses where we wrote down the, all these formulae right so you write the formula as uh, position size into exit price minus entry price and if you are going short you write the position size with a minus sign right so it's logical if you're going short the position size will have a minus sign so you have a minus sign you have this into so that's a, so that's why you don't have all these complicated because even in the last exam people have messed up this is your exit price minus the entry price okay yes why is this coming out again what did i do here did i oh i did it the other way Yes. actually i i should have the the exit price is actually h12 not h13 so i just chose the wrong cells okay uh, so h12 minus h13 okay okay so this will show now as mehak has told us this will show a profit okay so this is a profit but we are so this is the hedge position pnl okay so the hedge pnl we can just call it a hedge pnl this is the position uh, the pnl that is showing in the hedge portfolio the hedge portfolio will consist of all kinds of positions can consist of all kinds of positions relating to all of these contracts okay so if you go here you could have positions in crude oil in gold in copper you could have positions in the dollar yen and positions in the aussie all the hedge positions all of these will be hedge positions okay so you take all the hedge positions together that's your hedge portfolio all right so the total pnl on the hedge portfolio essentially so in this case we take an example of a simple single position okay where crude were the underlying position <laughs> So we take an example of one KRF market only. We see that our hedge position shows a profit of this much, about quarter million. But the underlying position would have a same would have the same loss because the underlying position is plus. So all you have to do is basically change. In this case, if you want to calculate the underlying position, you would just change, or we can do it here. So we can do the underlying position calculation that we are discussing here and the hedge position calculation here and we can make it a little smaller so that everything can be seen in one view okay is everyone able to see all this yes Purit, are you following okay so this is your hedge position pnl is this and what is the underlying position it's not minus 25 we know the underlying position is plus 25 okay the underlying position is already there on the balance sheet it's plus 25k okay so on 25k you lose when the price moves so this is we should call this the exit uh, the entry price ENP and uh, this is the exit price the exit price and this is the position okay so the we can take this up as well and, and obviously this is your PNL yes everyone is clear about this is everyone clear about the calculation what is the situation that we are looking at you are here on the oil market you have an underlying position on the crude oil market which is long 
right? And you take this, look at the market, you take a, you do your market analysis using fundamentals and technicals and everything, and you come out with a view, okay? And you your view is that the market is going to collapse, the price is going to collapse, so you quickly hedge all your inventory, all your unhedged inventory of 25k barrels. You hedge it by selling 25 contracts, uh, and uh, you go short 25 contracts and the next day the price drops to 50. So your entry price for the hedge is 60.20 and uh, the exit price for the hedge is 50. Okay, $50. We'll take it as so. We're calculating the PNL. We are assuming that the whole program is over in one day just to understand the concept, right? And when it drops, I'll just, I'll come to you, Kushbu. I'll just explain this once again. So is everyone following this calculation? Yes? Okay. So uh, we have a, the underlying position the the hedge position when you go short 25k you have this is the entry price so on this formula you make quarter million dollars on the hedge position but on the underlying position because the underlying position is constantly being revalued re you have to imagine that the underlying position is being constantly revalued at market prices remember i told you that you have to imagine that your balance sheet is constantly being revalued at market prices your balance in practice of course it will not happen probably earlier than a quarter in practice when you're doing accounting reporting and all that when you have to be you might have to revalue your inventories you might have to do it in uh, on a quarterly basis or half yearly basis but it for the purposes of a hedging uh, program you will have to imagine that your balance sheet is being uh, revalued on a second to second basis with updated market prices is everyone clear it's almost like you have DDE links in your spreadsheet where you are updating the latest uh, unhedged inventory positions and then there are DDE links here which are feeding in the market prices directly from a trading software like this where you're getting all the market prices directly into the spreadsheet and your total US dollar market values are always changing dynamically second to second is everyone following the scheme you have to assume that your underlying position is being revalued on a second to second basis the whole balance sheet is being imagined uh, is being revalued uh, you know uh, continuously all right so in this case the latest revaluation before you went short the latest revaluation of the balance sheet would have been at at uh, sixty dollars sixty twenty dollars because that was the market price when you went short and we'll, we'll create an artificial situation and we'll assume that we'll forget about next day the very next price is actually fifty dollars next second the price drops to fifty we're just creating a artificial situation to understand the logic so the logic will not change even in a normal situation so after you hedge at sixty twenty okay the price drops to this so on the hedge position you make a profit of quarter million this is clear to everyone right and on the underlying position what happens because the uh, entry price basically here entry price is going to be the last price at which it was revalued because you're imagining that the balance sheet is being continuously revalued okay at market prices so it's almost like the balance sheet the market prices are feeding in through a DDE link so latest market prices always latest market values therefore always <coughs> Yes, everyone is following this. So therefore, for the purposes of calculating the PNL on the underlying position, you will take the latest market price or the previous market where you went in with your hedge position, okay? Uh, because we are considering the uh, the impact on the PNL from the movement of the price from 60.20 to $50. So you can say this is period one and this is period two, okay? So since we are considering this scenario, we will take the equivalent of the entry price on the underlying position as six, the, the period one price because that is the last revaluation. We are trying to calculate the loss between period one and period two. Is everyone clear why we are taking the, please make sure you understand the scheme of calculating the, because everything has to be understood uh, through each step, logical step. Otherwise, you will not uh, understand the process. Okay, you will not internalize the logic. Right. So is everyone clear about this? Why this is taken as the entry price? Because you're calculating the loss between period uh, occurred that occurs between period one and period two. So for the underlying position PNL, you take the period one price as the entry price, and the period two price is taken as the exit price. Yes, everyone is clear. Yeah, all clear. Okay. Yes, Kulpu, what is your question? So therefore, I'll just before coming. So therefore, what happens is when you once you apply the same formula, the size of the underlying position is long, right? And so the PNL on the underlying position is 255. Okay, minus same as the PNL on the hedge position, but with a negative sign, with the opposite sign. 
yes right so therefore what it shows you is the truth of what i told you just now that when you go and hedge your entire position okay or whatever amount of the position that you hedge you have effectively locked in a price of 60 20 for your inventories because the underlying position loses quarter million but the hedge position makes up quarter million so when you total up the two pnls hedge position plus underlying positions your total pnl is uh, is zero incremental pnl is zero so the price is locked in effectively at 6020 is this point clear to everyone have you understood the scheme so similarly what will happen here when you're doing here this is why we are discussing the scheme of the project so we notice that the uh, based on the movement in prices and the movement of the underlying position uh, uh, movement of the um, uh, valuation of the, the net worth changes in between the start of the project and the end of the project right based on that you have the underlying positions have lost this much amount of value seven hundred thirty thousand dollars is everyone clear yes are you following this logic yes okay so if this is the case we will also then separately look at what the hedge pnl has produced what is the hedge position because you would have been doing some hedging throughout these four weeks of the program and just like this 255,000 etc you would have made some money maybe you lost some money the hedge position could have lost money as well it's because you're going to be doing a dynamic hedging program right so in that case what will happen is we will put in this is what you guys have to put in you have to take your hedge pnl from the beginning this is what of course i will ver verify so i will need the starting and ending uh, account statements to be put in as pdfs okay now here tarun go i told you to sit at the back why didn't you go i don't want to see any more no no go and sit at the back no go and sit at the back sit with uh, sit with uh, in, uh, in uh in uh, puneet's row go and sit in puneet's row i already told you don't sit here yeah okay so uh, no, no, sit, sit on the outside then you will disturb Puneet what dirty table is dirty okay okay all right okay all right so what are we talking about yeah so you will calculate your hedge pnl based on the starting account value versus the minus uh, the ending account value you'll calculate your hedge pnl let's assume that your hedge pnl ends up being 245000 okay so now notice what happens to the net pnl everyone can see the net pnl here so your net pnl reduces yes because when the net pnl is nothing but the hedge pnl as you can see here uh, the net PNL is nothing but the hedge PNL plus the underlying position PNL. Is everyone clear about the scheme? Now you've understood the scheme. So this is how all hedging programs will operate. Even when you're running, uh, you can strictly speaking run hedge programs even for a speculative book, okay, which is more common in active asset management in traditional asset management programs, which are typically just long only on bonds and uh, equities. So they may run some. Uh, you can so so even speculators can run hedging programs, but we will not complicate our understanding at this point of time. But once you understand the concept of hedging clearly in terms of underlying uh, underlying positions and hedge positions, once you understand the logic clearly, you can apply that logic even in a uh, speculative trading book okay so we'll discuss that later hopefully at the end of the project at the end of the, the discussions for this case so everyone is clear about this now so then we will tally the teams and i'll rank the teams based on the same system okay pro rata or etc and uh, we'll score so this is your score essentially right so what you'll have to report is basically the uh, starting and the ending i'll send you the instructions you said i'll put in the instructions in your project brief so you'll have to upload the pdf statements uh, for the ending of the period and the closing of the period so that i can verify your account balances the change in the account balances will be your pnl is this clear and your responsibility is to change take that figure and put it directly into this yes everyone is clear this will be here and then you put in your group members and tws id and password and then you send it to me okay so this is going to happen so now you've understood the scheme what is the goal of hedging you can understand it with even if, if you understand it with respect to one krf market then you can understand the whole scheme because the whole scheme is nothing uh, but the addition of several krf markets so once you've understood the logic for one market it's the same logic for every market yes you just have to keep repeating it obviously there's a lot of work involved because you have to monitor each each market but the logic that you're applying in each market remains exactly the same you're going to be asking the question if i don't do anything is my net worth going to rise or fall 
this is basically the question that you're asking okay and that of course the answer to that comes from looking at what happens to the asset values or the liability values okay when you're looking at this side of the balance sheet it's not always that you're looking at asset values when you're looking at this side of the balance sheet you're looking at liability values right so therefore this also has a different but the question that you're always asking is uh, what is going to happen to my net worth if i don't hedge okay and then if you think that worth is going to go up then you don't hedge and if you think that worth is going to fall then you will hedge and how much you hedge that's your judgment right okay so this is the scheme of the project which we had planned out sorry i i never got to kushbu's question yes what is your question <laughs> yeah what is your question go back to the calc to the calc okay okay so here yeah so um for hedging a uh, position p and n you have uh, taken the formulas uh so formula is the same no uh, you have done 60.2 minus 50 right yeah so so no 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 i have done in this case i have done it as 12 minus 13 that's no don't need to for you to write because this is in your spreadsheet you can just uh, you can uh, yeah 12 minus 13 No, what is <coughs> one minute one exit minus entry price right yeah so in one minute it may be a little confusing because we have written the exit price first maybe that's why it's confusing uh, we are short at 60.2 yeah so that's uh, the entry price okay yes because you are see one minute let's be clear the formula doesn't change the formula is already in your notes you can look it up go and look it up but try to understand conceptually what we have done as tarun correctly pointed out okay where i was making the mistake and uh, the formula is always the same it's a standard formula not clear that uh, we are going short at 60.2 one minute one minute let's rewrite the formula one minute let's rewrite the formula for all position pnl or pnl basically okay pnl is equal to pnl is equal to position times i can't even see where the star is okay position times what should it be here exit price actually i have to put uh, we are rewriting this but let's okay let's do that the font is big enough put it okay is this clear same general formula it does not change for longs and shorts that makes it easier to remember that that's what we should always try to do when we try to study that's why when we study markets we don't study just bond markets and stock markets like most mba programs cover we cover all markets because the framework of all markets uh, the general market framework like base asset terms asset huh what happened huh <laughs> what happened <laughs> <laughs> okay guys one second let's understand uh, just go and see what the problem is yeah. okay guys so let's understand this clearly one minute one minute please focus on what is being discussed karotra don't look at your phone so phone is here okay Q, don't, don't look down st1 close the door okay guys let's make sure we are all clear about the formula okay yes sir. let's make sure everybody is clear about the formula because many of you have made mistakes even in the last exam formula is very simple logically you can just remember it it's always position size times exit price minus entry price and the only tweak we have is logically when you are going short you write the position with a minus sign which is totally logical when you are short positions you write the position with a minus sign okay and nothing else changes right so if you put this this is the only formula that we have applied in both the cases okay this is all there in your previous course notes as well we had a long discussion on various types of calculations 
so this is basically the only maths you need in finance you don't need uh, very high five maths but you should be comfortable using algebra because you can solve a lot of these uh, de recurring decision problems you can just program it into your spreadsheet and makes your life much easier and also prevents mistakes if you're calculating everything all the time uh, you can make mistakes so if you have it programmed then you're not likely to make mistakes okay all right so is everyone clear about the formula we'll explain it to her when she comes back okay so that's all we have here so we have this logic I think anybody else is uh, where's this calc okay right so we have applied the same formula we just copied the formula from one square cell to the other so in both cases all you have is the hedge position uh, uh, shows a profit but the underlying position shows an equivalent loss so your net um, movement in total PNL is zero from the point when the price was here from the point when the price was at 6020 whatever the valuation was on the underlying position right that valuation is effectively maintained because all the loss in value in the underlying position from here to here okay is completely compensated by the offsetting profit in the hedge position is everyone clear that's why that's why we say that you have essentially locked in the valuation for the underlying position at this price the scheme is clear Aurora what is your Microsoft whatever <laughs> game you are playing what does it say does it show a profit or a loss okay put your phone down and focus on what is being discussed okay all right so um, is this point clear to everyone that when you go and hedge something successfully whether it's successful or unsuccessful now we look at the unsuccessful part okay we looked at the successful scenario your hedging was successful so uh, your view was absolutely correct the market did collapse so the underlying position lost value but the hedge position made up offsetting amounts so there's no net movement in the underlying position now let's look at a, the let, let now let's look at the long uh, let's look at the unsuccessful scenario okay quiet here what is happening here no no talking please make sure you focus on what's going on now um, let's look at the unsuccessful scenario same set setting set we starting point is the same 60 20 we have now once again i have to cut marks for gulati and garotra now we have to move you somewhere here why don't you just sleep don't wake up if you're waking up you like kumkaran you know you're waking up and making trouble she was asking me to get it back Oh. Why, why will I uh, get minus much for that? Oh. Because Sir. you're talking. Oh. Sir, I was saying I'm not a person. Why will I get a get much for that? You are talking. <laughs> because you're talking. I'm talking. I'm not. I'm not doing anything. I'm a girl. Why do you keep talking? No, no. But why did you wake up and start talking? That's too much, sir. No, you sleep. You sleep. Okay. What happened? The phone has gone back to her. No, sir. It's not with me. <laughs> no, I'll just have to confiscate all the phones at the beginning of the class. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> One minute. What were we discussing? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we were discussing one minute all right okay one minute be quiet i don't want to see any talking here okay uh, be quiet so now let's consider the unsuccessful scenario let's consider the unsuccessful scenario okay so uh, the unsuccessful scenario is you still go short you have a bearish view on the market all right you go short the entire 25k car, uh, you hedge the entire 25k of inventory okay so you sell 25 contracts at 60 20. now the next uh, next moment the price goes to 70 dollars all right so what happens is the next moment the price goes to 70 dollars now what has happened here when the price so now what do we change entry price does not change right the exit price changes the exit price becomes 70 dollars right so we should actually make this equal to this so we don't have to write it twice and the entry price is also equal to this we are calculating the same when you're writing it in your spreadsheet you can write it this way all right so you can actually but the hedge position will not always be equal to minus uh, opposite of the underlying position because you may be doing partial hedging you may not hedge the entire 25k based on your view right so we can't equate these two with a negative sign right so now what is happening when it's 70 dollars the, what is happening to the hedge position the hedge position is losing money because you're short at a lower price and the revaluation is happening at a higher price 
so you went short chart wise if you look at it you went short here okay and then the market moved here so obviously you're losing money right so the hedge position is losing money right but what is happening to the underlying position what is happening to the underlying position it's making money yes sir. because the underlying position is long so the underlying position the last revaluation of the underlying position was at 60 20 and the next revaluation goes to 70 dollars yeah is this clear okay so uh, then uh, in that case the underlying position continues to make money right what happened you want to go what happened you're not feeling well no no if you have doubts you ask me no no you don't worry about students no 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 you ask questions i've always encouraged i have always uh, encouraged people to ask questions okay so you ask questions to me don't ask questions to tarun or anybody okay no. so nobody should be uh, harassing people because of asking questions okay so people have a right to ask questions so everybody should be asking questions whoever has any doubt should ask questions because when we see exam in the exams we see many people are not able to answer things properly many of people are many people their concepts are not clear okay but at least she is asking questions yes, sir. but other people are not power also ask questions many other people chug also school chug after getting his job now chug is relaxed so <laughs> so yes, no longer asking questions so but before that he was asking questions so people saloni also asked a lot of questions okay so people who ask questions garvid also asked questions actually in between when he is actually in the class so uh, so asking questions is always to be encouraged so nobody should be trying to harass people for asking questions okay so let's make that very clear okay all right now uh, what were we discussing so can we go, now let's go back to your question here <coughs> now let's explain once again the formula that we hear so make, make sure you understand that the formula that we are using this is already there in your previous notes but we have written it again is the font big enough yes so the formula is always the same we don't change the formula for long positions or short positions all we do is that when we are looking at a short position PNL calculation, we write the position with a negative sign, which is logical, right? That's all we are doing. So it's the same formula that is being applied in both cases, right? Exit price, in position into exit price minus entry price. Same formula, okay? This is already in your notes and it's also in your previous notes. Okay, so now you can see this right now you see this here that uh, so so we are actually considering a different point of view now see if you can uh, if this makes sense so let's be clear the PNL formula in both the cases is the same it's an identical formula we have just written the exit price first and the entry price later maybe it would have been more intuitive to write the entry price first and the exit price later so the formula is that same formula we have taken and we have written it here in the two PNL uh, cells same formula no change okay so the underlying position is remains long now we are considering a different situation where your view doesn't work out but we're trying to illustrate the principle that your price is still locked in okay the price is still locked in at the price at which you hedge the net price the net realization for your inventory okay net price realization for the inventory that you're hedging is locked in at the hedge entry price at the hedge position entry price that's what we are showing the hedge position entry price in both the cases is the two cases are where your view works out to be correct and the second case we are discussing is where your view works out to be incorrect your view turns out to be incorrect in both the cases the entry price on the hedge position is that the price at which you hedge right so we are saying that your net price realization for the whatever uh, uh, item on the balance sheet that you're hedging right it's not always an asset or anything it might be a liability but the net price realization or the net price valuation uh, uh, net valuation for that particular item on the balance sheet is locked in at the price at which you enter the hedge position this is the principle that we are illustrating okay so uh, maybe we can uh, we can write this down as a principle if it's not in case it's not already in your uh, notes this is the principle that we are discussing that net uh, realization okay or value realization net for asset liability position 
net re value realization for asset liability position um, <coughs> is locked in at hedge position entry price this is clear this of course is only true provided uh, 100% of the amount is hedged because of the way I've written the first part of the sentence provided 100% of underlying position is hedged yes is this point clear to everyone is this clear why I've written it this way yes. that essentially the point we are trying to illustrate maybe the wording can be made a little more elegant that can be made a little bit more elegant but what we are trying to show you is that the net value realization because we can't always write the net price realization because that would refer to inventory items but sometimes you have liability items also that you're hedging so we are talking about the valuation of the uh, uh, liability items okay so the net value realization or the price realization for the asset liability position that is being hedged right uh, is is locked in at the hedge position entry price provided you hedge hundred percent of the position because of the way I've worded the first part of it okay so I'm not really like for the amount that is being hedged and all that that's the only principle this point is clear to everyone yes sir okay that's all we are trying to illustrate here that now in this case we're talking about a situation where you go short and your view turns out to be wrong you go short because you have a very bearish view on the market but in fact what happens is after you go short 25 contracts here the market shoots up right the market shoots up to seventy dollars right after 60 after going short at 60 20 so in this case the calculation that we do to figure out what happened to our total uh, to our hedge position PNL and underlying position PNL the cal calculation that we do is here right we look at we position we already have is the same because we are hedging 100% of the position for this example right so the entry price remains the same 60.2 the exit price now is $70 because the period 2 price is $70 so we are considering the impact on the PL between period 1 and period 2 okay so the period 2 price is uh, trade taken as the entry price the the, the last price uh, is taken as the exit price and uh, the entry price is the first period one price okay is everyone following the scheme yes uh, right so in this case what happens you are you see that the hedge position loses money because obviously you went short over here and after going short the market shoots up so you're losing money per unit and you've got 25 contracts so you're losing 25,000 into this amount of movement and that loss is equal to this so the hedge position is now showing a quarter million approximately loss yes this is clear now what what is happening to the because your total PNL is actually hedge position PNL plus underlying position PNL right as you see in your scheme of reporting right the total PNL is actually this plus this these two put together is your total PNL that's what you're really concerned with okay so in this case when you see what is happening to the underlying position PNL the entry price for the underlying position PNL has to be the last price at which it was revalued which is the period one price which is 62 60.2 and the exit price will be the same period two price so you see here because the underlying position is long when the price moves from 60.2 to 70 dollars there is a profit on the underlying position is everyone clear there's a profit on the underlying position because if you're long you can just look at the chart here and see it if you're long and the price moves up from here to here you're making more money yes so what is happening here is that the underlying position is making money but the hedge position is losing money and the amounts are offsetting okay this first plus 245k minus 245k yes so they're offsetting so what is hap so then if we ask this question what is the change in my total PNL from this point point number one period one where 60.2 was the price and I decided to hedge my entire inventory from that point onwards what is the incremental change in my total PNL no change change is zero because whatever was gained on the hedge uh, on the underlying position was completely lost offsetting loss on the under hedge position so this again once again shows you that once you hedge a certain amount okay and if you're taking a simple example you're taking a static hedging program once you hedge a certain amount you have effectively locked in the valuation of the underlying position at that hedge position entry price 
is this clear this is the only thing that we are illustrating here in this uh, when using this language this is not the one okay so the language may not be very elegant okay because I'm just writing it now as we discuss it but this is what this means point is clear okay so you understand the scheme of the project that this is how the project is going to work you cannot touch the underlying positions because they are affected by how the business is operated so your goal is to make sure that you monitor the market if the if the net worth is likely to go down because of any adverse revaluations on the underlying positions whether assets or liabilities okay you have to project that okay you project that based on your view and if you feel that this is going to happen and this is going to have a negative impact on the net worth then you will enter the appropriate hedge position and what amount you enter that's based on the strength of your view etc and whatever plan you have so uh, and you do that and then hopefully you're right and you're able to therefore lock in so imagine that essentially the the goal of a hedge program is right now say if say crude oil prices are rising if these guys take a view that the market is bullish okay and this is going to break through 62 half eventually head down to head over to hundred dollars okay so then what will they do yes I'll do if the underlying position is long and the hedging team has a view that the crude oil price is bullish the outlook is bullish and prices are going to go up okay shoot up to hundred dollars eventually then what should they do on the hedging uh, as far as the hedging is concerned yes nothing right so they should do nothing because you you basically don't project any adverse movement in net worth you actually see the net worth going up so it's clear yes. so eventually if you imagine that if the whole point of hedging is that you follow the market if you feel the market has reached the top let's say at 7250 you feel that okay this hundred dollar view is not likely to be correct okay it won't go above 7250 and the market has already reached this level at that price you lock in so that means what you have done is you have locked in this realization for the inventory <coughs> at 7250 <coughs> at that time you go lo go lo uh, go short on the hedge position and even if you are not correct you are still able to lock in you have, the effect is always the same that you are able to lock in the price for the the, the valuation uh, level for the asset or liability item on the balance sheet at the price at which you enter the hedge position is this clear the principle is clear to everyone yes. okay so the goal of good hedging is to wait until you uh, get an appropriate price okay and and then only enter the hedge position obviously or it's all based on your view being right or wrong okay right let's see if we have uh, we have something else here What is the next point I was going to discuss? Okay, now this is a very important point. I want to quickly discuss it. We have a little bit of time. Very important point. Why, when I asked you that, of course, again, don't understand this mechanically. This is also written in your notes. Um, oh, everything is written in your notes. Is this part? Is this is part of your project brief actually? So let me make this big enough here, uh, and let's go to the end. All right, end. Um, Right. the golden rule of hedging we are going to discuss the golden rule of hedging okay again first I'll just explain the concept briefly to you and uh, then we'll do some calculations based on what we did earlier <coughs> but the golden rule essentially is that one of the rules one of the reasons you don't uh, increase like if you remember when we were discussing this question earlier a lot of people said that if your underlying position in this KRF market is long and uh, your view on the KRF market is that it's very bullish it's likely to go up and then I asked them what will you do on the hedge uh, as far as the hedging uh, is concerned a lot of people said we will buy right the reason you don't do that one of the reasons you don't do that of course because we've given you this logic that you are really concerned with what is likely to happen to the net worth if the net worth is likely to improve if you don't do anything then you don't do anything right so because by doing something you would have locked in this price and the net worth will actually be prevented from improving if you did something because and if your view is correct and it actually goes up to $72 you would have forfeited all those profits which you could have made on the underlying position okay you would have locked in the underlying position valuation at this 6020 the reason you don't do it so here basically this leads us to the formulation of the golden rule of hedging now it sounds a little complicated but you'll understand that your net of initial underlying position adjusted by hedge account position which means hedge position plus plus minus 
underlying position plus minus okay this is all part of your notes I've, I've what I've done is I've taken your project brief and I've pasted it onto the end of your risk technical note on risk management so that I don't have to open an extra document while discussing in class but your project brief is also there as a separate document okay but this is only for my convenience so I've just pasted the project brief so this is part of your constraint in the project brief so you have to make sure that at all points of time your uh, total of the total positions does not exceed okay the uh, initial amount of the underlying position and does not fall below zero okay so what is the rule we are saying that the net of the two positions the sum of the two position edge position and underlying position cannot ever go outside the bound of zero and initial amount of underlying position which means let's take it with the example of the of the crude oil which we are discussing to keep it simple okay so your starting uh, so your starting position is underlying position is 25k all right so that's why we said so in this case what this means is okay initial amount means at each period so later on if the head sales team updates you that we have sold 15,000 barrels to Japan then the new position is 10k then we'll be working as 10k this 25k whatever you we're discussing in this part that will become 10k whatever is the initial for that particular period every time you uh, change any of these uh, position if you update the position size based on the input from the sales team or the the treasury which takes a new loan or something every time you change that we take it as a new period okay effectively for this principle right the initial period of the initial part so understand this initially for just for this that so if you have 25,000 this means that your total position hedge position plus underlying position cannot go outside the range of 0 to 25k okay this is what the golden rule of hedging you can go and think about it later but it's very simple actually it sounds much more complicated than it is okay it sounds much more complicated because it has to be written in a very mathematically precise way so that it is an objective rule which a computer will also understand it has to be written like that so when you write it like that initially it seems very complicated but this is only all that it means is in this case your because remember your hedging your goal is to reduce risk if your goal is to reduce risk okay so if you are bearish you can't sell if you're very bearish you can't sell like 50k 50 contracts because your position is only your underlying position is only 25 contracts if you sold 50 contracts then you are increasing your risk once again right so therefore you can't do that because the goal of hedging is always to reduce risk and to bring certainty to cash flows remember that philosophy of risk because many professionals also don't understand many treasuries go bust many companies go bust because they have all these kinds of disasters okay very well known big public listed publicly listed companies they don't follow these simple rules so the goal of hedging you have to always remember is to bring certainty to cash flows okay so therefore to bring certainty to cash flow and to reduce risk <laughs> So that's why your total position has to remain between 25k was your starting point. Yes. At any point of time, your total position, when we took a total of hedge position plus underlying position, can't go outside the range of zero to plus 25k. Yes. If you're very bearish, you don't sell 50k, 60. You don't sell 60 contracts, 90 contracts. You only sell a maximum of 25 contracts. And if you're very bullish, you don't buy anything because your underlying position is only already long if you buy then your total position if you buy say if you have 25 contracts long underlying position and you buy 10 contracts wow i'm very bullish let's buy then you have gone to 35 and you have violated the golden rule of hedging are you following yes sir okay so uh, therefore please make sure that this this you understand this concept okay we'll just briefly cut uh, touch on it in the next class okay but the point is make sure you understand this uh, principle very important principle okay uh, instead of folding up we still have one more minute please make sure you understand this this is an important constraint this also has to be adhered to okay when you're running your project so i will have to take actually i will have to take all your uh, pdfs because i have to make sure that randomly checking doing audits and making sure that any point of time your total position did not because i know the underlying positions and hedge position will differ for each team so i will do random okay. checks to ensure that no team has violated this rule we'll be unlike positions given to you everybody starts with the same underlying position but your hedge position may not be the same as Aurora's hedge position no at any point of time so if he's on a different team he'll have a different view right so is, is this clear to everyone yes sir golden rule of hedging why do we have this rule because you cannot 
increase risk through a hedging program, which many companies actually have done. These are all just risk management disasters. JP Morgan lost more than $6 billion just a few years ago. Okay, uh, So no, uh, hedging cannot lead to the increase of total risk. That's why I've defined the hedgers as reduction of total risk. First transaction in financial markets will always reduce the total risk. Because once again, you see that, can you see that rule? If you apply the golden rule of hedging, the first transaction has to always reduce risk. It cannot increase risk. If you do dynamic hedging, the second transaction can once again increase the risk. But the first transaction always has to reduce risk. Is this clear? Yes, Everyone has understood all these points? Yes, okay, please write it in your WhatsApps. <laughs> But it will be replaced fully nine. The coming it will be. I don't know what the schedule. So your question is with regard to LIBOR. Why is LIBOR being discussed and not SOFA? Okay, because SOFA is still quite new. Okay, so uh, if you look at the current uh, set, if you take a snapshot of outstanding loans today, okay, the big chunk of outstanding loans is still in floating rate loans. It's still indexed to LIBOR, not SOFA. Okay, if you look, you have to look at the legacy. Okay, because the world has been operating against, against LIBOR since the mid 70s. Okay, so all these loans that have been built up, so it's still very LIBOR based. Okay, but uh, so they've done two things. They have fixed. They have tried to tweak the fixing process so that there are no. Uh, we don't have a repeat of those uh, cheating incidents. Okay, manipulation of the uh, the rate. And then they are also trying to set up SOFA, which is much more on an actual basis. Okay? Yeah. So so so, but the transition to SOFA is far from complete okay so therefore still you have to be aware of LIBOR and all that will change none of your risk management principles will change all that will change is when you go to SOFA you will be using you will have a new uh, euro dollar futures contract like this one now will be basic uh, this particular contract here okay will be based on again okay, you'll have another contract against SOFA but the principles of hedging and the thinking will not change in any way because uh, now you will be taking views on uh, SOFA and then deciding whether to hedge or not to hedge right now uh, later on and now what you're doing is you're taking views on the cash market euro dollar deposit and this is also going to be the same kind of view it's a view on a short-term interest rate right so therefore it will be the same so that's why I gave you the idea of SOFA okay that there is new something new called SOFA and I'll try to put some links in for SOFA as well where you can read so you researched it on your own very good very good so I'll put in some links okay so you can study it but the you have to also be aware that the huge legacy of LIBOR for so many years that cannot be over undone overnight you have to let these roll, loans roll off okay and new loans you have to see even today you'll see loans being given against LIBOR because all the hedging the transactions the the agreements the the you know the is the confirmations everything is against LIBOR so they have to rewrite all that okay but uh, it, uh, why it has been changed to SOFA? Uh, I guess it why has it been changed? Yes. Yeah. Because so because of financial crisis that happened. No, 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 no. Because I told you, no, they, they cheated on LIBOR. Oh. Remember how so LIBOR used to be? Hmm? It, it is because of financial. Crisis. And don't read net. I'm telling you, don't read the net. Don't read all this uh, weird sites. Or you read only the sites that I'm giving you, the books that I'm giving you. Don't read here and there on the net what Quora is yes, saying and this and that. You will get all kinds of uh, you know stupid ideas. These people don't know what they're talking i already explained this to you in the class don't read all that i've told you you read only the links that i'm giving you and on the books that i'm giving you don't read outside that okay because because you think there are lots of people writing all kinds of stuff on the internet they don't know what they're writing actually right so don't read all that stuff. but i why did you even uh, then you should have struck you that it's not matching with what i said if you remember what i said in the class that sofa came into play why because these guys cheated on libor yeah. how was libor being fixed yeah. libor being was being fixed like you get a bunch of banks together yeah. you call them up and ask them at what, what price are you going to like be likely to borrow yeah. okay uh, or at like what price are you likely to lend to other banks in the system okay and you will give a rate six percent he will give six point two percent he will give six point one percent then they'll throw out the last two uh, widest two rates okay highest and lowest and then they'll average the rest and then they'll pro publish that at LIBOR mm -hmm. so now this is subject to if I want to rig it I will call all of these guys and say okay let's do a conspiracy let's show the rate as being much lower than it actually was mm -hmm. right 
you may be actually be able to borrow only at 7% but he will show the rest at 6.2 he will show at 6.1 you will show at 5.9 because you're all colluding with each other you're, there's a conspiracy okay to rig the rate and that gets published as a lower LIBOR rate. The reason this happened is because the LIBOR, basically LIBOR rates were affecting the commercial banks and they were in trouble because of the financial crisis, because there was a credit crisis. So the statement is not wrong, but it's not sufficient. It's not sufficient. It actually what happened is because they had funding problems. So they wanted to illustrate, they wanted to avoid people getting panicky about their funding rates. Because see, if I know that Tarun's company is borrowing at higher and higher rates, banks are charging his company higher rates, then I will also become careful why are banks charging him? that means his credit quality has gone down that's why banks are charging him a higher rate mm -hmm. so that he doesn't want that information out in the market mm -hmm. so he wants to show that he's borrowing at lower rates that's why they rigged it okay so that's why this is always going to happen whenever you have a survey based rate so far is not a survey based rate it's an actual transaction based rate okay what rates that you actually borrowed at so value, value weighted average so if you borrowed 100 crores you borrowed he borrowed 50 crores your rate will have double the weight okay so it's a volume weighted average so now you're going to a transaction based rate in sofa to avoid these kinds of cheating incidents okay so the statement has not been correct but it does not give you all the information you don't get all the logic but I mentioned this in the class because they cheated that's why we moved to sofa right but the transition is not complete yeah yeah Anything else? Okay. You yeah. were saying that uh, golden rule, that position should not go uh, lower than zero and more than uh, 25k. Yeah. So, uh, sir, we don't do anything to position. So, why this rule is good? Like, I don't see any logic for this rule. Because we are actually not working upon the position size. We are just working upon the prices of the... No, no. Because, see, you also have to understand that just like your total PNL is equal to an edge PNL plus underlying position PNL, yeah. right? So, similarly, your total position at any point of time. Remember how I defined hedgers and speculators? That total risk. So, first transaction reduces the total risk. What is that total risk referring to? Why didn't I just say risk? Because it's total risk, which is the sum of underlying position risk plus hedge position risk. Okay, and risk in this case is measured by the total size of the position. The bigger your position, the higher the risk. So you are saying that if we are long on uh, underlying, so we shouldn't go long on hedging also. Yeah. So, so don't say long on. Say long. We long underlying. Yeah. Will not go long hedge also. Yeah. So because if you are long on on the underlying, that's why you have the golden rule that the yeah. total position, which is hedge position plus underlying and position, hedge. which is basically a proxy for your risk the bigger your position the more risk you have because the market can go either way right so that's why you have to have this rule that uh, you don't because you, you as a hedger you can't increase your risk yeah. from so the total we'll amount be like uh, playing with this rule then we'll be increasing our risk it's focused. if if you don't follow this rule yeah yeah if you don't follow, if you don't follow this rule because if we uh, hedge for more than 25k then also we are increasing our exposure and if we uh, like if we do the same uh, position as that we are in underlying so then also we are playing with our risk hmm? like we are the second part of the statement did not like if we are long in underlying uh, don't say long so in long, underlying long underlying yeah long underlying we shouldn't go long uh, hedge yeah but if you are running a dynamic closing hedging program you can go back from 25 if you have gone from 20 the first transaction has to reduce the total risk yeah okay no but i'm saying now you can't go above moment, yeah at no moment we'll go above the yeah so your total the, you always have to keep your eyes on the total position yeah when you start the hedge position is zero at the start the hedge position is zero so you only have the underlying position so if you do any hedge transaction the first trans that's why i've defined it in that way that your first transaction must reduce your total risk total risk is hedge position with underlying position so the first transaction why and that's again because of the operation of the golden rule of hedging that you cannot increase if you're bullish on the underlying position mark krf market okay then you cannot go uh, long immediately the first transaction must always reduce your total risk so you can only come down and if you go net if you are long 25k so long yeah yeah if you are long 25k and you sell 45k that's also not allowed 
because then your first transaction is increasing your total risk yeah. because you're going net short 20k that's also not allowed because the goal of hedging is the philosophical uh, ages of hedging is that you must be reducing risk and bringing sovereignty to cash flows okay this principle has to be also understood the philosophical approach to hedging it's based on that yeah that what that's what drives all this huh? So that and many people. The funny thing is that many people don't understand it. People, professionals working in publicly but traded then companies. You shouldn't say it as hedging. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that sense, in that sense, what do we say? What we say is that you have violated the rules of hedging. Yeah, but then it's not hedging. No? Yeah, then yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. So, but in fact, it happens with hedging teams in the real world. They don't follow the discipline. It's a compliance problem. It's a, it's a compliance failure. But it happens. I mean, whenever you have human beings, you'll have compliance failures. But I have seen two, three companies auditors report. Uh, I didn't saw any of this. Yeah, but, but auditors may not even have understood all this. <laughs> auditors may not understand all this. They may not be looking out for all this. J.P. Morgan lost more than six billion dollars just few years ago. I think they they went they were running a hedging program and they morphed into a speculating program. Okay. A bank like J.P. Morgan lost six billion dollars in the chief. You can look up the scandal. There's actually a Harvard case on this. It's called the London Whaley story. Okay, they were trading credit derivatives, and they ended up. They got confused. Basically, they started out with the idea of hedging, and then it morphed into. It's very natural with human beings. It's very natural. That's why you need all these frameworks. That's why you need all these uh, ideas and rules to make you. Uh, stay focused. Obviously, we don't focus on uh, increasing our NAV, but we are focusing on not decreasing our NAV. Yeah. The purpose of this. Yeah. So you also you do focus in a way that if you feel that the net worth is going to go up based on market yeah, movements, in that case you don't do anything. Natural. You don't yeah. do anything, so you are still focused on it. Yeah. So it's not really that you can't say that you don't focus, but you That's your action natural. is different. Yeah. Your action we is are different. Not doing anything for yeah. That. And why is the action different? Once again, golden rule of hedging. That again crystallizes and and, and uh, forces you to understand the um, concept of hedging being uh, a risk reduction approach yeah clear okay so all this is being recorded so that's good so that people can listen to it later right yes you have a technical question okay so then we'll uh,